Well, the Alpine's quite interesting because it was always one of these cars that was going to go extreme either in one direction or another. If we think back to last year's car or the last few uh, years' cars from Alpine and Renault, they have very much worked on the centerline cooling concept to reduce the size of the side pods. This year, um, I mean, I, I joked online that they were going to go with no side pods whatsoever, having seen the Williams. Uh, and some people actually took that <laughs> rather worryingly to be true, or they were going to go away from the center line. They've kind of stayed in a, a for me, a slightly confusing middle ground. Uh, the car is almost conventional um, it still relies on center line cooling there's a massive radiator package mounted um, above the gearbox fed by the roll hoop the side pods are much smaller i mean the side pods are still relatively small and they then have an odd mix of louvered outlets and uh, a coke bottle exit you know the cannon exit above the um, rear beam wing so they've kind of split their their bets in both camps here uh, i thought they would have been a, taken a bit more direction one of the interesting things with the Alpine this year is that they have uh, an all-new power unit. We have to remember that this power unit will be homologated at the start of March. Uh, there's a couple of bits which will be homologated late in uh, October, but the majority of the engine. So they've got an all-new V6, all-new turbocharger, uh, all-new MGU-H, and they've gone with the split turbocharger, uh, which is what Mercedes started these whole regulations back in 2014 with. Honda followed and now... Now, certainly, uh, we know that Alpine uh, with the Renault engine, we don't know where Ferrari are at the moment. We've not seen any images to confirm either way yet. And this allows them to repackage their, their, their car, makes the back of the engine much slimmer, which allows them to bring the bodywork in, gives you more space for the, the cooling package at the back of the engine. And the other thing that they've done is they've followed something that Ferrari and Mercedes have both done since 2014, which was to get rid of the large air-to-air -air intercooler that sits in the side pod and is fed by the side pod inlet. And instead, they've gone to an air-to-water intercooler. So this is effectively an intercooler that has a water jacket on it and is set cooled by a separate radiator, much smaller radiator than a conventional um, intercooler in one of the side pods, which means that this intercooler can then sit, in this case, as we can see on the Alpine, in front of the engine, which, uh, again, is a, a, an absolute masterpiece of packaging because it would tend to make your fuel tank bigger because you're actually kind of having to burrow into the fuel tank area to make space for all of these pieces that are now hanging out the front of the engine. Alpine seem quite happy with their engine performance. They know that they've got to be aggressive in order to you know, have the level of performance that they're going to need going all the way through to the end of 2025 when these engine regs uh, finally um, end and we go to a new package of engine regs. So th there is a risk that this could be an unreliable engine, but they're prepared to do that because they need to get the performance and they can make changes for reliability reasons. So the Alpine... Um, I think this could be a bit of a slow burn. I don't think they're going to come out of the blocks with this car. I think it's going to take a bit of development. I think we could see some changes to it, um, particularly around the side pods, as things develop. But so far, you know, again, it's it's it, it's a, a good first crack at these regulations. But um, I just feel that maybe they could be lacking a little bit of performance in the early part of this year.